Beloved by God Church, let us begin our service before the Lord. Let us stand up and confirm the confessions of the faith of our heart, the promise that belongs to the door of our hope. May the resurrection of Christ rule within our bodies. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are grateful to your holy name for the great privilege of being in this place that your hand has appointed for the worshiping of your holy name. And now allow your inheritance in the name of the blood of the covenant to be lifted to heights that are not reachable for us and destroy all burden and sin that binds us. May in this service, as previously, all the works of devil be cursed, illnesses, poverty, untimely death, demonic possession, all matter of fear, depression, destruction, ignorance and error, all of this, may it depart from the tents of your holy nation. And now stand, O Lord, upon the place of your rest, you and the ark of your might, and may your saints be clothed into your salvation and rejoice before your face. Give us more of your Spirit, saturate us with your Holy Spirit, allow us to find your great face. We thank you that the service is presented by Apostle Arkady into your godly hands, and we pray, continue to lead it with a mighty and powerful arm, our great God, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May you be blessed. Please be seated. And so if you have your Bibles, please open with me a familiar place of Scripture that contains the depths of the riches and wisdom that we are not yet familiar with, that the Holy Spirit wants to reveal so that we would know God as our Heavenly Father, so that we can be just as He is in nature because we're born from Him. Matthew 5, 45 and 48 that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. The sermon that I would like to continue is called Call to Perfection, and it is addressed to the children of God. In other words, just as uh, having our sun rising upon the righteous and unrighteous and our rain pouring out upon the just and unjust as God does. Every one of us possesses a sun that we are the sons of the seventh day, not the first, second, third, fourth, or sixth, but the seventh day. <clears throat> because the seventh day is the day of rest where the Lord has made peace. The Lord, this is a symbol of the peace of God with man. Only then can a person be light? I will repeat that when God created the earth and he said, let there be light, there was light and God separated it from darkness. But this light is not able to rule over the earth or control the things of the earth. This was the resurrection of the mineral life. Planet earth became alive. The minerals became alive. All other planets were also created from minerals, but they're dead they are not alive and when there's a meteorite any man of study if he's sincere the difference between a meteorite that falls from a different planet and a stone any stone that you will find on the earth or any mineral the difference is that this one lives and grows it is living it's a mineral life that nourishes the uh, the vegetation and also animals and so this life was not able to control the earth only in the fourth day when the uh, moon and stars and sun were created was this able to happen same thing with us when we're born from God we're alive we're light but this light is not yet able to rule our essence or be a light for the world that would be able to rule over them only when we become light as our Heavenly Father is light when we begin to understand his holy love that is not tolerant but is selective because the Sun destroys certain people and 
warms others, the rain it blesses certain people, and others it floods with its waters. <clears throat> the scriptures say to Job, do you know how the Lord uh, flashes with his clouds? How he sends his clouds filled with moisture so that they go according to his guidance <clears throat> for one to show the mercy others to punish them. And so you don't need to deceive yourself that the love of God is the same upon the righteous and unrighteous. If God would have given his son and reign equally to all, he would not have been God. He would not have been God. God, the essence of our God, the essence of our Father is that He is just. He is true and He is righteous and holy and that His love is only for His children. He does not love the children of the devil. The children of the devil are also people. Not all people have the image of God. The image of God are only with the children of God. Don't deceive yourself thinking that all men are the image of God. They are the image of the devil. If you remember how Jesus said when he was talking about the elites of that time, when they were saying, our father is Abraham and so forth, they he said, your father is the devil. You want to do the things that he desires. People whose father is God, they will desire to fulfill God's will. But Jesus says, you want to do the works of your father, the devil, and you uh, illegally say that God is your, uh, that Abraham is your father. Abraham is the father of all who believe and not those who were uh, physically born from him or genetically are from him. And so now let's look at, let us study how we, how we need to be perfect so we correspond to the perfection of our heavenly father because relevant to fulfilling this decree and commandment, Addressed to the children of God, we stop to study the purpose of the righteousness of God in the heart of man. What goals the righteousness of God is called to pursue, abiding within our heart. And in part, we've been studying the purpose of the righteousness that is within our heart, <clears throat> received by us in the broken tablets of the covenant and established in new tablets, called to give God the ability to give the promise to be heirs of peace, not by the past law, but by the righteousness of faith, just like he gave it to Abraham and his descendants. <coughs> Romans 4.13 For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If we, by righteousness of faith, don't enter the inheritance of peace, we will perish. <coughs> although we receive salvation, although we receive it, we we will lose it and our names will then be blotted out of the book of life. We've noted that the inheritance of peace abiding in the heart of man is the treasury of our hope in God, containing the bond of all of the promises of God, which are the goal of righteousness. When we are justified, then the goal of our justification is that we as righteous people <clears throat> perform righteousness. To perform righteousness is to go to peace, to do everything so that you can draw God's favor upon yourself and make a covenant of peace with Him. Because righteousness, by the means of the peace of God contained in the covenant of peace, can and is called to guard our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ. If this does not happen, then our thoughts will not be in Jesus Christ. They will be in money. They will be in anointing. They will be in gifts of the Spirit. They will be in blessing. You know that the gifts of the Spirit, anointing, blessing, you know that if a person is not renewed and does not seek God, it brings dis dishonor and pride. I am not like everyone else. God is with me and not with you, and I will prove it because I can rebuke demons. I can do one thing or another thing, but when I go to heaven, God will look at me and not recognize me. And I'll say, Lord, how is it you don't recognize me? I did this in your name and this in your name. And he'll say, lawless one, get, a, get be away from me because you illegally used my anointing, my gifts, my, un, my name. You did not have the right to use my name, but you were doing this. Your thoughts were not in me. Your meditations were not in me. They were in my gifts, in my anointing, wherever else. And so when people uh, use this anointing, they try to become wealthy with it or, and, or for other purposes. 
true wealth that we are called to strive to are the clean and imperishable and undefiled, and they have nothing to do with physical uh, wealth because the one we pursue, the one we strive for, are not of this earth, and we are here temporarily so that we can be grown into full measure of growth in Christ, and God has prepared for us a new heaven and new earth where righteousness rules. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, Philippians 4, 6, 7. However, to better learn and understand the goal of righteousness, which it pursues in the quality and nature of the peace of God and the conditions outlining the way our righteousness needs to be clothed into the armor of this peace, we came to the necessity to study four classical questions. What qualities do the scriptures ascribe to the peace of God called to guard our minds in Christ Jesus? What characteristics does the peace of God possess within the relationship of man with God and God with man? What conditions do we need to fulfill so that we can be clothed into the peace of God called to guard our minds in God? And by what signs do we need to examine ourselves that we are the sons of peace and therefore are the sons of God? The Approaching the study of the goals which are the task and challenge that we have received in righteousness, we've noted that if a person has not died for his nation, the house of his father, and for his corrupt desires by the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, then his justification, which he receives in salvation by faith in Christ Jesus in the format of a guarantee, will never convert into the quality of righteousness, where he would be able to receive the promises of peace so that he can produce fruits of peace in his righteousness. And consequently, the promise of peace will be taken from such people that would have given them the right to be called sons of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God, Matthew 5, 9. And so peacemakers are people who have made a covenant of peace with God, who have peace in their heart. They are the ones that can create peace. Look at the relationship of the saints in the churches. Is there peace in the heart or continual uh, jealousy, suspicion, hatred, but all of this is covered with uh, the words love, I love you brother, I love you sister. Uh, Judas also loved Christ and he said, Rabbi, I love you and he kissed him. But Jesus asked him, is it with a kiss that you betray the Son of God? You with your love, you, uh, you betray the people of God, you have evil in your heart and yet you spread evil about your brothers and sisters. This is not love. This is hatred. This is something satanic and pervert, perverse that you have cloaked into love so that you can calm your unclean conscience. The quality of the peace of God in the heart of man is evidence that he is a son of peace, which gives God the ability to reward this person with the virtue of the name of his son, so that he can share with him the fulfillment of all that is written in the Law, Prophets, and Psalms. Because justification which a person receives by right of his birth from the seed of the word of truth has converted to righteousness, where he became able to produce fruits of peace in his relationship with God and with those around him. In the given situation, Hebrews 12, 14, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Here it's talking about such a peace that can be performed exclusively within the boundaries of holiness or be a demonstration of holiness, the boundaries of which are the commandments of God. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men, Romans 12, 18. If, it's, if it is possible, because there is, there are people it is not possible to have peace with. You don't have the right to have peace with all people. The peace that we demonstrate out of the boundaries of holiness, not as a demonstration of holiness, is actually lawlessness for which we will need to then pay a price of eternal life. It is not possible and criminal to have peace with the unclean who in their time accepted the truth. They call themselves Christians. They have the outward look of godliness who 
truly accepted the truth in their time and afterward left their church and turned away from the holy commands that were given to them and then made their own services and still want to have fellowship. We will never have a fellowship and make peace with synagogues of Satan. Never. There's no peace for the wicked. And we see that's what the Lord says because the very fact of their rebellion and resistance to the word spoken by God's messengers who are placed over them testifies of the loss of peace and members them to the category of the wicked, Isaiah 57, 20, 21. And this is not the only place of scripture, but the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. They try to achieve this peace by finding another church that would be able to support them. And they search for these uh, connections and he makes these connections, freeing the church of God from these kind. We have many churches that have uh, been formed due to division. We have already looked at the first two questions, what qualities the scriptures ascribe the peace of God and the purpose that the peace of God is called to fulfill in our relationship with God and with one another and stop to study the third question, what conditions we need to fulfill so that in Christ Jesus, by the means of justification that is converted into righteousness, we can be clothed into the inheritance of the peace of God contained in the laws, prophets, and psalms. In a particular format, we already looked at the first component of the price and stopped to study the second component. The first price for the right to be clothed into the peace of God call to guard our thoughts in Christ Jesus consists in departing from evil and doing good. Depart from evil and do good. And then seek peace and pursue it. Psalm 34, 14. The second price for the right to be clothed, and this is what we have been studying, price for the right to be clothed into the peace of God called to guard our thoughts in Christ Jesus consists in the condition to have a turban of fine linen. Exodus 28, 36 through 43. You shall also make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it like the engraving of a signet, holiness to the Lord. And you shall put it on a blue cord that it may be on the turban and it shall be on the front of the turban. So it shall be on Aaron's forehead that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel hallow and all their holy gifts and it shall always be on his forehead that they may be accepted before the Lord. You shall skillfully weave the tunics of fine linen thread and shall make the turban of fine linen. For Aaron's sons you shall make tunics, you shall make them sashes for them. So you shall put them on Aaron your brother and on his sons. (coughs) You shall anoint them, consecrate them and sanctify them that they may minister to me as priests. And only after they have this uh, turban of fine linen with the diadem were they able to be anointed as priests. If this is not present, then they would not have been able to be anointed as priests so that they can approach God. They shall be on Aaron and on his sons when they come into the tabernacle of meeting or when they come near the altar to minister in the holy place, that they do not incur iniquity and die. It shall be a statute forever to him and his descendants after him an eternal uh, statute. Even today it has significance and has meaning in a different form because it's, it's eternal. It's eternal for kings and priests. We note that a covering in the form of a turban of fine linen is a form of temple wear and only for those men who came from the lineage of Aaron. This form of clothing differentiated these men from both their other Levite brothers, but also from all the rest of the Israelites, including women. Therefore, it was forbidden to wear this kind of clothing in your everyday life because they were intended only for the purpose of of approaching God. And this was only for the sons of Aaron. The reason for such, such a rule, established rule, consisted in the fact that the headpiece of fine linen at the time of worship, first, served as evidence of peace with God, and second, was an attribute of dedication to God, giving man the right to approach God. Therefore, to enter into the presence of God without a turban on your head made of fine linen meant to bring a deadly sin upon yourself or to draw guilt upon yourself that will not be able to be renewed with repentance. This is specifically how this command was given. They shall be on Aaron and his sons when they come into the tabernacle of meeting and when they come near the altar to minister in the holy place that they do not incur iniquity and die. 
<clears throat> in the service of the temple and in their regular life, uh, w in worship for all Israelites, it was they were not allowed to wear these uh, garments that of the priest. These garments they signified coming into God's presence, and so you could not wear it every day. This was only these were only put on temporarily while they were approaching God. They came. And only the sons of Aaron, not all Levites, but only the sons of Aaron. And so women from the Israelite nation were never allowed to wear these or have a covering on their head. They never covered their head. There were coverings, but they were of other purposes that were not to approach God, but to get married or uh, as a, a form of decoration. And it was not just in Israel. But all of the ancient nations did this. The bride would cover herself, decorate herself. Uh, she would put on different adornments upon herself. Uh, just like in the, in the situation of Rebecca, when she saw Isaac coming and she asked the servant, who is this? And, she, and he said, this is my master. And she came down from the camel and she covered her head, just like as a bride that is uh, prepared for her, for her groom. Sometimes coverings were also used for uh, lower uh, purposes to earn money with their bodies. This was a harlot's uh, form also. Just like Tamar, if you remember, uh, she did this so that she can uh, receive the seed because she had, she needed to receive the seed. Uh, she needed a son from her husband who had died, but to, and to be able to have this uh, child uh, from her husband he had passed away and so the brother needed to marry her and when he did uh, uh, he also passed away and so then Judah was afraid uh, to give her his, her his other son and God made it that he had he uh, found her thought she was a harlot and uh, lay with her so she can uh, bear a son and so again women in those times did not wear this covering every day. It was only for specific purposes. To represent the authority of God in the matrimonial union of Christ and His Church, Christ as the groom having a wife does not need to cover His head because He is the glory of God. Therefore, the absence of a headpiece from fine linen at the time of worship called to happen in spirit by a person who is continually dedicated to God. Here we're talking about a spiritual person who needs to have a covering we're not talking about the physical person we because there are ignorant leaders that have uh, decided to put these coverings upon the physical person either hats or or scarves or other types of coverings and I, when I look at these things uh, while I was a child uh, I knew that this was not necessary and I was a witness of many uh, uh, situations uh, in our house we always had churches services that would take place many groups of uh, would c gather in our house they would communicate and pray and when it was time to pray everyone would start looking all the women start looking for what to cover uh, their head with uh, either a pillow or something because they believed you have to cover your head and unfortunately one of uh, the sisters grabbed a a used diaper. She thought it was a clean diaper, and uh, and uh, she grabbed a used one and, and 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 covered her head with it. And I didn't know what to say. Uh, everybody was praying. I later only began to uh, really uh, question why is it that the children of God have come to this? What it, that they think this is right required. We're talking about the spiritual person, the, the person of the spirit. It's not the flesh, our body that worships, it's our spirit. In our spirit, we're called to worship uh, and not with the physical body. The spirit needs to have this covering. What kind of covering is our spirit supposed to have is what we're talking about. And so when a person is not dedicated to God and he tries to come into God's presence, he uh, then this is from man's side or man is attempting in this case to rise to the heights of the clouds and to sit at the side of the north to impersonate himself as God or like the be like the most high the 
uh, fallen angel wanted to do this. He tried to do this because he wanted to put this cover. Uh, what does this cover, this hat, this turban do for the Levites? It made them in the likeness of God, which is why the devil wanted to be in the likeness of God, because this covering, this turban was glory and beauty, and we'll see that further. And relevant to this, we studied seven or decided to study seven signs defining the turban made of fine linen although there are many more of them and we have been studying this turban of fine linen not in the form of some kind of physical attribute upon the head of a man but as a component of our dedication giving us the right to be clothed into the peace of god in the form of the turban of fine linen only when this turban is put upon you only then are you able to be anointed and dedicated to god we studied uh, a few of them already as the first a headpiece in the form of the turban of fine linen is a symbol of a legitimate relationship with people by the message of which God sends and makes a covenant of peace with us. A headpiece in the form of turban of fine linen is an attribute of authority over the angels who serve us according to the will of God. And the third, I won't go into uh, more detail on the first two because we've already been through it and so we're going to go to the third a headpiece in the in the form of the turban of fine linen is a seal of righteousness serving before God as evidence that this person belongs to the holy of the Lord that this person is the holiness of the Lord that he is righteous you shall also make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it like the engraving of a signet holiness to the Lord and you shall put put it on a blue cord that it may be on the turban It shall be on the front of the turban, and it shall always be on Aaron's forehead, that they may be accepted before the Lord. Exodus 20, 36-38. Holiness to the Lord is redeemed by God, covered in God, being the sanctuary of God, bound to God, dependent upon God, belonging to God, the personal belonging of God, taken by God into His lot, inheriting with God, and bound to God by one destiny. This is what it means, this this, uh, engraving holiness to the Lord. And it was connected upon this uh, golden plate uh, upon the turban. The plate of pure gold is testimony that this person is redeemed by the blood of the cross of Christ from the inherited curse which he inherited genetically from his fathers. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, 1 Peter 1, 18 through 21, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, he indeed has foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. If we will not have this diadem, We'll, have, we, we'll not have this covering, then we will not have faith and hope in God. He has given to us in Jesus Christ this turban, this covering, to be in the likeness of God, holiness to the Lord. The golden diadem with the engraving as a signet holiness to the Lord are people that are dedicated to God and who have upon their forehead the seal of God, called to serve as protection from the destructive wrath of God when judgment begins over the house of God. <clears throat> because... It's not always that there's judgment over the house of God. He will begin judgment when he visits, when he begins to measure the building with his measuring wreath or or with the golden settings or with his uh, uh, weights or scales. God uses a lot of different instruments for, for weighing or evaluating or measuring. And so all of this is the word of God, the truth of the word of God. He will measure, uh, how much we correspond with our worship, our life, how much we correspond to the these measuring tools. Let us look at the Revela- book of Revelations 7, 2 through 4. Who, who are these people who have this golden diadem? Because in Revelations, it's shown in a very different way, but it's all the same diadem, but it's shown in a very different uh Example, this is a seal upon the forehead, the seal of God. 
Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of these who were sealed, 144,000, of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Revelation 7, 2 through 4. And so the 144,000 is 12,000 12, from every tribe, 12 times 12. And the number 12 is, it shows that this person has in his heart the teaching of Jesus Christ that came in the flesh, 12 teachings. These are the 12 rivers, or the four rivers, that flow from the garden of Eden that watered the Eden uh, the Garden of Eden, and each of these have three, are separate, separated into three. And so God uh, dedicates uh, a specific time in which he applies the seal. And so before God begins judging, he first sends ahead a person who has uh, the tool of a writer. He uh, measures us with with this tool of a writer. And so he uh, applies this seal upon the forehead of the holy ones who will dedicate themselves to God in accordance with his order demonstrated in a legitimate relationship with his messengers. When the time given to dedicate ourselves to God finishes, where God will seal those dedicated to him with the seal stating holiness to the Lord, the fifth angel will sound, which will cast the religious prince of darkness down who rules in the air over the earth and then vengeance will, t- will take place over all of the churches that called themselves Christian but did not acknowledge his order and dedicated themselves to God but not uh, according to his order, not suspecting that they are dedicating themselves actually to a different God, which is why they were being filled with the power of the demonic spirit and they sanctified themselves as in the form of an encounter three days. This is sanctification occurs throughout the span of our entire life. Uh, the encounters is a three-day event that takes place and prostitutes and drug addicts after three days think that they can go out and preach to the world and so they again are filled with the power of the demonic spirit being fi- convinced that they're being filled with the holy spirit revelations 9 1 through 4 because they at their time did not receive the seal of god on their foreheads then the fifth angel sounded and i saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth to him was given the key to the bottomless pit And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. If you remember, we talked about uh, the... uh, not harming the grass of the earth. When God sends his uh, rains so that uh, the green, the grass would grow in in a wilderness that has no sun or rain, or or has no rain, has sun and no rain. And so the wilderness, the desert, is a place where a person meets with God, and God has created such uh, streams in in, in the hearts of this heart of this person and where he can thunder and so this grass these grasslings uh, begin to grow uh, these are God's promises that will uh, be growing within our heart will be encouraged to grow in our heart in the book of Joel and Amos uh, we also see this here in Revelations he is literally listing the same things as the other prophets not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree because we have the tree of life but only those people who don't have any of this who don't have the seal of God upon their foreheads and nature does not uh, bear emptiness if you don't have the seal of God then you have a seal of something else there's something else in your mind in the given revelation it is not talking about the people of the world but about people who call themselves holy and righteous, but who do not have the seal of God upon their foreheads in the form of the turban of fine linen, identifying their dedication to God in receiving and obeying the words of his messengers. 
Ezekiel 9, 1 through 7, then he called out in my hearing with a loud voice, saying, Let those who have charge over the city draw near, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. And suddenly six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faced north, each with his battle axe in his hand. One man among them was clothed with linen. You know, the angels don't have uh, garments of linen or clothing of linen. Clothing of linen are those that are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Linen is the seed of the uh, linen. It's something that dies and resurrects, and from this then is made this garment. Um, <clears throat> the linen garments is something the priests wore when they would come into God's presence. Not all had the right to have, again, this linen garments. If anyone will make these same kind of garments, it said in Scripture, that one will be eliminated from his nation. And so linen uh, garments, they were specifically prepared for the priests Uh, they washed their bodies they prepared themselves to put them on and they would put on then these linen garments so that they can go in and serve God and then another they would have the inner layer and the outer layer they would wear and we see here a person clothed with linen and this person clothed with linen is a messenger of God in every specific church who has a writer's inkhorn at his side and they will measure our our worship our purpose in God <clears throat> and so the ink uh, the writer's inkhorn is and and there's also many different examples of this there's also the measuring read um, and so among them was clothed with linen and had a writer's inkhorn at the side they went in and stood beside the bronze altar all these people and this person with the linen garments. Now the glory of the of the God of Israel had gone up from the cherub because there was the bronze altar where it had been to the threshold of the temple and he called to the man clothed with linen who had the writer's inkhorn at his side and the Lord said to him go through the midst of the city it's not go throughout the world and all people go in the midst of the city Jerusalem these, these are not just the chosen these are people who have received salvation these are people who are candidates for the kingdom of heaven these are people who are the bride of the lamb through the midst of Jerusalem and put a mark on the forehead of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are on, that are are done within it and so put this mark on the forehead of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done within it to the others he said in my hearing go after him through the city and kill So he goes first, and then he said to the others, Go after him through the city and kill. Do not let your eyes spare, nor have any pity. Utterly slay old and young men, maidens and little children and women, but do not come near anyone on whom is the mark. And began at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were before the temple. They began with the elders. They began to destroy the elders. Then he said to them, Defile the temple and fill the courts of the slain. Go out. And they went out and killed in the city. <clears throat> let's combine these two places of scripture the Revela- book of revelations and then Ezekiel as it says it opened up like a furnace and a cloud came up and locusts came upon the earth the locusts are it's they are given power as the earthly scorpions scorpions are demons that are on the earth and they harm people but these others are a different level uh, these these locusts are a higher level uh, these locusts this angel the demonic prince uh, he was cast down why did the Lord cast him down and how was he cast down if you remember there was a war that took place and the great dragon was a uh, cast down from the from the air because between us and God there is air and in this level there are demonic princes and we have no authority over them we only have authority over the scorpions the demons that are on the earth I give you power to stand upon all the powers of darkness but over those is God and God can cast them down due to our prayers when we say Lord deliver me save me from the evil one from that one because the heavens are for the Lord but the earth he gave to the sons of men We don't have the right to bind demons in the skies. But with our prayers, the prayers of saints, they're bound by our prayers. God takes the 
prayer of the righteous and binds them and casts them to the earth from the sky, freeing up the space for meeting because the meeting with Christ needs to happen there where it's occupied right now. It needs to happen in the air, but there the devil uh, with his legions. People say he's in hell. Yes, there are certain demons in hell that are condemned there and it's not good for them there (coughs) in this hell. When demons are cast into hell, when they're rebuked, they don't want to go there. You remember when Jesus uh, cast out demons from the pigs and there was a legion of demons, there were 12,000, and they were asking Jesus not to uh, allow them to go to hell, to put them into uh, the person that he freed, and they wanted, to, they asked to go into the pigs, if you remember. Um, the prison, uh, this is a prison, so hell is a prison for them, that is a temporary prison, and in any prison you go into, of course, there are criminals that are gathered there, <clears throat> And there's someone who controls and uh, also uh, makes fun of these them and does whatever he wants with them. And so this uh, thief, this person that rules is de- the devil. And those who go to hell, the demons that go to hell, this is a temp- temporary place uh, for them. They will then be cast into the lake of fire. But this is just a temporary place that where they're held and so they don't want to go there but when this prince was cast to the earth from the sky he was given power authority with the key God allowed the uh, the demons to come out those that are and so when criminals and thieves and and killers and all kinds of terrible rapists when they come out of prison when many are come are released. If you would release all of the criminals from the prisons, uh, the police will not be able to do anything on the earth. Everything will become dark because the criminals and the laws that are implemented, uh, <clears throat> that are the laws that are implemented among the criminals, will then be established on the earth. And so, any country where there, there's a revolution taking place, there's actually not uh, a revolution, but criminals that establish. Uh, in Israel, there are criminal brothers. Who or in Ukraine, there are criminal brothers who do everything they want. I recently was looking on the TV and they were showing uh, one famous charismatic leader and this and so the mayor of the city that was placed by these these brothers <clears throat> he said that I can uh, pretty much force any minister because this is nothing for me for God's glory and so these brothers for the glory of God who knows what they can do if you release them but if you release them they will destroy everything but they will not be able to touch anyone who's who has a seal upon their forehead if you remember they followed the one that has the measuring uh, that of the uh, pen and so they will have power but they will not have power over those that have the mark these will be the elite of heaven. They will be afraid. The thieves of in law and criminals and s- sinners, all those who say that God loves everyone, let's see how, when you will be in smoke, and it's already released if you don't know yet. <clears throat> you, you ask, where did this tolerant, tolerance come from? Why did the churches start as supporting this global tolerance uh, that are so-called Democrats they support, and it's never been democratic, actually. it's a dis- That's a, a lie. <laughs> this came from religious circles, from the charismatic circles that began to <clears throat> behave demonically and say that God is with them, began to perform these encounters, saying they're sanctifying themselves three months and uh, courses, and a person is convinced they can go and evangelize. They think that they will evangelize, and for this they will receive access to the kingdom of heaven we need to understand what this is those who will have this turban of fine linen and will have this golden uh, plaque upon it with the signet uh, no one will be able to touch him the blue cord that this golden diadem of holiness was tied with to the turban made of fine linen indicates the presence of the resurrection of life in the given person 
because the blue color is the glory of heaven. This is the life of God. And it serves as evidence that this person died for his former way of life of the old man and has been renewed with the spirit of his mind, which is the mind of Christ in his spirit. Fourth, a headpiece in the form of the turban of fine linen is being ready <clears throat> for the marriage celebration with the lamb or being ready for marital relations, elevating a person to a greater level in his relationship with God. Revelations 19, 7, 8. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. <coughs> and so this, <coughs> this linen... And so this uh, pl plate, this golden plate, it, it was connected with the blue cord to this turban of fine linen. Linen served uh, this diadem. And so the marriage of the lamb is when we put on this hat of fine linen and it is connected with the blue cord. This diadem is tied to this uh, turban that says holiness to the Lord, not acknowledging the place by God or by God authority over ourselves in the form of the turban of fine linen, we reject then our justification converting uh, that would be converted into the format of righteousness. <clears throat> and the, in this way, we break up the, our peaceful relationship with God, which prompts God then to blot our names out of the book of life. We need to understand that the turban of fine linen with the holy diadem places great, great responsibility upon the one wearing it. This is de dedicating yourself to God in His holiness. Let us look at what a true true sanctification is. Exodus 32, 26 through 25. 26 through 35. Then Moses stood in the entrance of the camp and said, Whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. <clears throat> and so the Levites, they were gathered to Moses and he they said, Come to me, whoever is on the Lord's side. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together to him. What is the sword? And it says <clears throat> to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let every man put his sword on his side and go in and out from the entrance to <clears throat> from the entrance to the entrance throughout the camp, and let every man kill his brother, every man and his com his companion, every man his neighbor. So the son of Levi did according to the words of Moses, and about three thousand men of the people fell that day. The, and this was not all the people that were slain; it was those who had. Uh, who had, who were holding on to the Baal, the God Baal that they had created. Then Moses said, Consecrate yourself today to the Lord, that he may bestow on you a blessing this day, for every man has opposed his son and his brother. Now it came to pass on the next day that Moses said to the people, You have committed a great sin, so now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. Then Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, these people have committed a great sin and have made for themselves a God of gold. Yet now, <clears throat> if you will forgive their sins, but if not, I pray, blot me out of the book which you have written. And the Lord said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. Now, therefore, go, lead the people to the place of which I have spoken to you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit for punishment, I will visit punishment upon them for their sin. So the Lord plagued the people because of what they did, the calf which Aaron made. Fifth, a headpiece in the form of the turban of fine linen is the unique ability to draw God's favor upon yourself contained in the covenant of peace we make with God. Exodus 28, 38, it shall be on Aaron's forehead that Aaron, that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy one, holy things which the children of Israel hallow in all their holy gifts and it shall always be on his forehead that they may, may, that they may be accepted before the Lord. The golden holy diadem that is connected to the turban made of linen is what elevated the turban made of fine linen to the status holiness to the Lord. A person clothed into the virtue of holiness uh, to the Lord becomes a tool of God by which God receives the legitimate ability to pour out his blessings as well as his curses in accordance with the demands of his holiness. Numbers 6, 22 through 27. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, spoke to A speak to, the, to Aaron and his son saying, this is the way you shall bless the children of Israel, say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. And so these are people who can bless. These are people who are dedicated to God. These are people that are, that are called by God. 
And today you see in churches where they ask the people, put your hands on one another and pray for one another. You can never do this. Be beware of this. Don't allow that others put their hands upon you except for a pastor and his helpers. Never allow anyone else to put their hand upon you. When someone says, uh, let me pray for you, you'll say, I have a pastor who could put his hand on me and pray for me. Yes, you're my brother, you're my sister, but you're taking upon yourself the functions of a pastor. Do not take that function upon yourself. You could put your hands upon your children when you when you pray for them at home. If your child uh, goes to bed, you can <clears throat> put your hand upon your child and bless your child. May the Lord bless you, because there you can do this. But uh, upon one another, you don't put your hands in any circumstance or any situation. Never do this and never allow others to do this. However, if the sons of Israel begin to question the position of Aaron and his sons and rebel against them, they, instead of receiving blessing, will be inheriting curses. Or more specifically, they will be destroyed from the nation of Israel and will be transformed into his enemy. From this we can con- conclude that the favor of God that is contained in the covenant of peace will completely depend upon the favor that is required to be upon us from those people that represent to us the image of God's sons. And of Levi he said, Let your thun- Thummim and your Urim be with your Holy One, whom you tested at Massa and with whom you contended at the waters of Meribah. Blessed is his substance, bless their substance, O Lord, and accept the works of his hands. Strike the loins of those who rise against him and of those who hate him that they rise not again. Deuteronomy 33, 8, 11. And so we need to keep in mind that the sons of Aaron coming from the line of Levites is first our new person identified in, as an imperishable beauty of the humble and contrite spirit which willingly and gladly accepts the, and obeys the words of the delegated from God. And so every new person is a person who possesses a destiny of Levi, <clears throat> the destiny of, Le- of Levi, and this obedience clothes them into a turban of fine linen with the connected to it with a blue cord, holy diadem, and in this way gives these people the ability to bless the vessels of mercy and curse the vessels of wrath in accordance with the demands outlined and written in scripture. The vessels of wrath and so put to de- death all of the fornication and all the evil jealousy and all of this you can curse put to death and bless your new person may you be blessed my new person before my god a headpiece in the form of the turban of fine linen is the covering of the most high and the shadow of the almighty under which a person can be protected and be at peace with god who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I trust. Surely He shall deliver you if you trust in Him, <clears throat> and you trust in Him if you have this turban. You don't have this covering of fine linen. If you do trust Him, you have this turban of fine linen. Surely He will deliver us from the snare of the fowler. And from the perilous pestilence, he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. <clears throat> and so when the prince fell, when he opened up the depths and the demons came out, began to destroy, when these six people began to destroy all, it says you will not be afraid. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. This is what we were talking about previously. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. The angels will keep you in all all your ways if you have this turban of fine linen. In your hands they shall bear you up. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and cobra. The young lion and serpents you shall trample underfoot. If you you confront any of these that will came out to destroy others, these you will be able to trample underfoot because 
He has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name, because he's known the heart of the Father. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Psalm 91, 1 through 16, considering that number six is the number of man, in this sixth component, we see the spectrum of the blessings of God. And this is because of the turban of fine linen. Considering this, a person that finds rest upon the shadow of the Almighty and whose stronghold and protection is hope upon God, he fulfilled the condition of accepting this turban of fine linen upon his head so he can make a covenant of peace. And this person then turns God's favor upon himself. And it says that God will deliver this person from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence <clears throat> when the Lord or when the devil will be catching people into his religious snares or nets. Uh, you will not be able to be caught into them. God shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. God's truth shall be your shield and buckler, because you have made the Lord, who is your refuge, even the Most High, our dwelling place. God will make it that no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near you, your dwelling. God shall give you, give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In your hands they shall bear, up, bear you up. God will not allow you to dash your foot against the stone. But the house of Israel and Judah will dash their foot against the stone. And the one that the stone falls on will be crushed, but the one but the Christians will be saved with this stone. This is the stone they will not dash their foot against. Many will dash their foot against the true Christ and will then preach a false Christ. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, you sh the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. You shall call upon God and he will answer you. He will be with you in trouble. God will deliver him and honor him. With long life, God will satisfy him and show him his salvation. This is because you will have this turban of fine linen, this covering, authority over the angels. Seventh, a headpiece in the form of the turban of fine linen is an item of glory and beauty necessary for anointing of a dedicated person because uh, anointing of a dedicated person to become a priest to God. Exodus 20, 40, 41. For Aaron's sons, you shall make tunics and you shall make sashes for them and you shall make hats for them for glory and beauty. So you shall put them on Aaron and... For your brother and his sons with him you shall anoint them and consecrate them and sanctify them that they may minister to me as priests and so people who have come to power over the nation of God by the means of division where they rebelled against the existing authority these are people who either had never had a specific covering or had it and then rejected it and so such people even if they come to God then this God is either their own personal spirit or a spirit of deception and if they are filled with some kind of power, then this power is either the power of deception, the deception of their mind, or the power of deception of the unclean spirit functioning through this person. <clears throat> Considering that our time is up, and before us, we have this great mysteries. This is the blood of the Lord and body of the Lord to take it and drink of it and eat it. <clears throat> this will be life for us, this will be healing, this will be protection for us. Right now we are going to bend our heads and pray, and all those who desire to resist their dependence, their fears, their, their illnesses, all curses in their life. Because in Jesus Christ we have healing and blessing, and I ask all to come out here to the altar, and we will pray for you before we take part in the communion so that you in your hearts can forgive all those who have offended you and acknowledge your guilt uh, before those whom you have hurt and tell the Lord, Lord, I will ask for forgiveness and I will repair the damage I've created. I forgive the one that's offended me. Your heart needs to be free so that the Lord can then show you mercy as you show mercy to those who have offended you. Amen. Let us pray.
I'm going to pray your prayer and I ask you to deeply believe that God is on your side. He is not against you. He has given His Son and in His Son He has redeemed you from your sins. And when you confess them and you leave them, He throws them into hell. He restores you in His justification and He gives you the opportunity to use His promises. Close your eyes. This is your secret room. Lift your hands to God. This is a sign that you're ready to receive from God what He desires to give you. Pray together with me, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you <clears throat> with an opened heart. I open up my sins, my dependence, my shame, my cowardness and my weakness I ask you forgive me wash me cleanse me heal my wounds cover my shame heal me from my illnesses that have covered me and that torture me I love you I come to you you are my God and I trust upon you I forgive those who have offended me as you have forgiven me according to your word I promise I will ask forgiveness of those whom I have offended and right now before heaven and hell I want to proclaim that in accordance to your words I am washed I am cleansed I am healed I am restored I am justified and I am saved. Amen. Amen. Your sins are forgiven and your trespasses in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May He look upon you with His great face and show you mercy and give you peace. May thousands and ten thousands attempt to come near you, but they won't touch you. May upon you the blessings of the ancient mountains be and upon your children all this will happen. Amen. Let us hear the word of God standing. 1 Corinthians 11, 23-32 For I see from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For we would, if we would have judged ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Please be seated. Before we partake in this great celebration, our pastor always notes that only one who has made, who has confirmed his faith through the baptism of water is able to partake because being baptized in water is where a person makes a covenant, a covenant, and he becomes the holiness to the Lord. And so this covenant gives us the right to take part in this bread and cup. But this is not the only covenant. There is a covenant of salt and covenant of rest as well. If a person will forsake the covenant of salt and covenant of rest, then every time when he will take part, in this communion, it will not bless him, it will condemn him. And so we have the great privilege 
And we have the great responsibility to understand what we are eating. Right now, we will ask everyone to stand. Please stretch out your right hand over your tithes and pray together with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the broken body of Jesus Christ in the form of this bread when it shall be passing by your people and we will be eating of it. May the might of your life come into our bodies and overcome death and swallow it up in our bodies. May our bodies be healed by taking part and eating this bread. We thank you for the healing of our bodies and we worship before you, our great God, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> and he had taken the bread. He said, take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please be seated. The road that is approached, please stand, and we serve one another with the bread. While you take part, I want to once again confirm some of the truth reiterate some of the truth that Pastor Arkady has spoken of. Understand the pur- understanding the purpose of the righteousness of God in the heart of man that is received in the broken tablets and uh, confirmed in the new. Right now what we're eating are the broken tablets, but what we're confirming, we're confirming in our life when we make the voluntary decision to take the position of holiness, to gird ourselves with sword and walk through the camp back and forth. That means we're confirming something. Jesus did something for us and we need to do something for him. And we do this so that we can receive the promise and not just the promise of healing or the promise uh, that lays at the door of our hope, but the promise that the Lord has promised is the promise that we be heirs of peace. A person who is called an heir of peace as one who has the right to all of the promises <clears throat> that are in Jesus Christ. And so when we ask God for healing, or we eat right now this bread and our body is in need of healing, let us remember, we could just say, Lord, give me healing. Or we could say, when we take this bread, Lord, thank you that you have made me an heir of peace and that I have the right to all of the promises, including the promise of healing including the promise you and your house will be saved, including the promise that lays at the door of our hope. Because every time, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. and to be an heir of peace or to be clothed into the peace of God there's a particular price that's required and we talked about the components of the price to be clothed into the peace of God is the condition to have this turban of fine linen and there are specific principles that we could not have missed in any way when listening to the sermon First, a headpiece in the form of the turban of fine linen is a symbol of a legitimate relationship with the people by the message of which God sends and makes a covenant of peace with us. A legitimate relationship with people by the message of which God then sends and makes a covenant of peace with us. He gives us then the promise to be heirs of peace, how important it is to have this legitimate relationship. When you lose your relationship with such a person, you lose all the promises and you lose then your salvation the scriptures say it's better that they not know the way of truth than knowing it return back from the holy commands that were given to them it would have been better that they didn't know them but you say what is the destiny of the people who were in our service and left the question how they left 
someone moved someone uh changed uh, changed the the country in which they live but they continue to support and are still an organic membership of uh, of they have an organic membership with the church uh they're still connected they're still abiding in the same teaching the same truth they still love uh, us these are people who are blessed but there are people who fall away from god and they fall away when they no longer have a legitimate relationship a good correct relationship with our pastor and so when uh you're i i get the question how do i greet a person or or communicate with a person who left or moved to a different state or country i don't uh look at where they moved i look at how this person treats the messenger of of god but how do you and so he loves our pastor you can have a good relationship with this person and communicate with them also but if someone's attending the service but uh, clearly hates or resists our pastor continuously this is one you need to uh, refrain from and not communicate with and so and if you uh, if the, you're then being questioned why you're not communicating with this brother or sister within the church uh, or this person's asking you could say because you have uh, spoken outward uh, you've, you've spoken publicly about your uh, rejections about your uh, problems you have against the, our pastor let us stand up and pray for the cup stretch out your right hand and we will pray Heavenly Father we thank you for the cup of the new covenant that is poured out for the forgiveness of sin when it will be passing by your people and we will take of it and drink of it may the might of your life come and may it trample upon death and swallow it up within our souls and our bodies we thank you that you have blotted out our sin before your face and have delivered us from the sinful conduct passed on to us from our parents we worship before the cup of the covenant our great god son and holy spirit amen please be seated that road that is approached please stand and we continue to serve one another and this was the first the second a head piece in the form of the turban of fine linen is an attribute of authority over the angels who serve us, serve us according to the will of God and so one who has authority over the angels the scripture uh, pastor was talking about how Rebecca had asked the servant who is this person coming and he said this is the son of my master the first thing she did is she came down from her camel and she then covered her head when we will be meeting with the Lord or when we come into the presence of God we need to understand that this is the place where we don't have the right to to come upon a camel or horse we need to carry peace we need to carry peace and this peace is that we cover our head as she had covered her head when she met with Isaac and so when we come to this place then upon this place we come here not just to serve or to do something for God but to receive that peace that God has prepared by demonstrating uh, acknowledging the order that God has implemented third a headpiece in the form of the turban of fine linen is a seal of righteousness serving before God as evidence that this person belongs to the holy of the Lord and so when we will be drinking this uh, cup we drink of it we need to understand we are the holiness to the Lord and this means we are redeemed by God covered in God we are the sanctuary of God we are bound to God we are dependent upon God we belong to God we are the personal belonging of God we are taken by God into his lot we inherit with God and we are bound to God by one destiny and also people <clears throat> who have the turban are people who are dedicated to God and upon their forehead there's a seal which is called to serve as protection from God's coming wrath there are a couple of methods how we can avoid this wrath when they were in Egypt the only way to avoid the wrath was to close their door and to apply blood upon the doorposts and lintel so that they could be saved when God will visit 
Egypt and we need to gird ourselves with a sword and go through the camp is the other one and this will allow us to be safe from the rat two different unique ways of doing this in Egypt it was closing your door applying the blood but when God visits his church with his holiness you gird your sword demonstrate God's holiness first often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes Is there anybody that may have been accidentally passed by? If not, I will ask everyone to stand and we will finish our service with our manifestation. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.